Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to the session on page object model in Selenium. Let's have a look at the agenda for the session. First, I will tell you what is page object model and why it is required. Next, I will talk about the advantages of page object model. Once you understand the concepts of it, then I will take you further through the session and talk about the page factory and tell you what it is all about. And after that we will see how the form structure looks like and how it should be configured with the help of a demo. I hope you found agenda interesting. Well, let's get started. First, let's understand what is page object model. Page object model is a design pattern to create object repository for the web user interface elements. Under this model for each web page in the application, there should be corresponding page classes. And this page class will find the web elements of that web page and also it contains a page methods which perform operation on those web elements. That is it consists of a page class along with the test class and the test engine. That is it consists of a page class along with the test case class. And one more important thing locators and test scripts are stored separately in page object model. The tests then use the methods of this page object model class whenever they need to interact with the UI elements of that page and the benefit here is that if the UI changes for the page the test themselves don't need to be changed only the code within the page object needs to be changed. Subsequently all the changes to support that new UI are located in one place. I hope you understood what is page object model. Now let's see why do we need page object model. Increasing automation test coverage can result in unmaintainable project structure if locators are not managed in the right way. And this can happen due to the duplication of code or mainly due to duplicated usage of locators. The chief problem with script maintenance is that if 10 different scripts are using the same page element with any change in that element you need to change all the 10 scripts and this is time consuming and error prone right and a better approach to script maintenance is to create a separate class file which would find web elements fill them or verify them. This class can be reused in all the scripts using that element In future if there is a change in the web element we need to make the change in just one class file and not the 10 different scripts. And this is achieved with the help of page object model and that makes the code reusable, readable and maintainable. For example, in home page of web application we have menu bar which leads to different modules with different features. And many automation test cases would be clicking through these menu buttons to execute specific tests. Imagine that UI is changed or revamped and the menu buttons are relocated to different positions in home page and this will result automation test to fail. Automated test cases will fail as scripts will not be able to find particular element locators to perform action. So now what happens quality analyst or quality assurance engineer needs to walk through whole codes to update locators wherever necessary. And updating elements locators and duplicate code will consume a lot of time to adjust locators. While this time can be consumed to increase the coverage. We can save this time by using page object model in our automation framework. So assume that a web page has an X elements and you write a test script for that. So you might feel it a cumbersome task to change the element locators in the entire script. Yes, it is of course. So what is the solution that page object model gives you? It writes element locators in one different class file and test case file will be written in the other class file. And that is the main motto of the page object model to help you in updating the code and that increases the efficiency of the test automation framework. So I hope you understood what is page object model and why do we need it. Having understood this, let's move further and see some of the advantages of page object model. So first one. According to the page object model, we should keep our tests and element locators separately and this will keep the code clean and easy to understand and maintain. And the page object model approach makes test automation framework programmer friendly, more durable and comprehensive. Another important advantage is that page object repository is independent of automation test. Keeping separate repository for page objects helps us to use this repository for different purposes with different frameworks like we are able to integrate the repository with other tools like JUnit, 
PHP unit, N unit, as well as with test ng, cucumber, etc. And also the test cases become short and optimized as we are able to reuse the page object methods in the POM classes. Any change in UI can be implemented, updated, and maintained into the page objects and classes. And page object model is the best applicable for all the applications which contains multiple pages. Each of which have fields which can be uniquely referenced with respect to the page. So these are few of the advantages that makes page object model as unique and easy to work with for automation testers. So now let's move further and understand what is page factory. Page factory is an inbuilt page object model concept for Selenium web driver, but it is very optimized. Here as well, we follow the concept of separation of page object repository and test methods. Additionally, with the help of page factory class, we use annotations that is at find by annotation to find web element and we use init elements method to initialize web elements. So page object model can be implemented with page factory and without page factory as well. If you implement it with the help of a page factory, then it uses by and there is no imports required and there is no cache storage. And if you do it without page factory, then you have to use at find by annotation, import the packages that is a page factory and cache lookup is faster. So that's all about how page object model can be implemented with the help of page factory and without the page factory. Now let's dive into some practicals. First, I will create a simple project with POM without using the page factory. Then I will show you the working of the same project with the help of page factory so that you can understand the difference between the two. So I have created a project called Edureka Selenium project and in that I have created a package that is code.edureka.pages and inside that I have only one file that is testng. I have named it as testng because this is a testng project and we will be checking the testng.xml file and that will be the part of our execution. So here what I'm doing, I'm not implementing the page factory. Instead, I'm creating only one page that is testng and writing the code in only one page and then referring it in the testng.xml file and executing it. So first, I'll show you how the execution works and then we'll take a look at the code, okay? First, let's run the program and check for the output and then I will explain you the workflow of the code. I'll run the program as testng suit. You can see that the testng detected its version and Google Chrome was launched. It navigated through Facebook.com, entered username and password, hit on the login button. And then it enters the value as edureka and hit the search box. Now if you want, you can just click on the edureka.in and you can do any other options as well. Now if you want to choose that, you can do anything as well. Now I will explain you this code. So first what I did, I imported all the packages and created a class called testng. And then I have declared the variable of web driver that is driver as public. And now I have written the at test annotation. So this is a process that it should happen at the test. That is the ongoing process. So inside the main method what I have done, I am using the driver or find element by ID. That is my locator and I'm sending the keys as my detail. That is email or your mobile number or anything. So this is the value of my element that is ID. If you wish to know more about locators, you can check out our YouTube playlist where you will be finding the videos for locators in Selenium, XPath and many more. And then you can get thorough through the concepts. And the same thing for password. I'm again using element by ID and for my password, this is the value. And I'm sending the keys, that is my password. And then to hit on the login button, this is the value of the ID and I'm clicking on the button. Why? Because it is a link and it's not a text box to use send keys method for that. Okay. And you saw that as soon as I hit the login button, it navigated through my Facebook home page and it entered the value as edureka. Correct. As you saw, all these things happen automatically. Yes, exactly. So that's how it works. And now comes the before method. 
So inside the before method what I have done I'm using the system dot set property to set my driver configuration. Why because I need a Chrome driver to launch the Google Chrome browser and navigate through a particular website. So how can we do with the help of a driver? So as I'm using a Google Chrome I'm using a Chrome driver and I'm creating the object of that and this is the path where I have saved my Chrome driver. Okay, so next what I did I'm using implicitly wait to wait for 10 seconds. Say for example a website takes seven to eight seconds of time to you know load the browser or load the website. I mean to load the website or a particular web application. So that is why if I don't want it to quit and exit from the website. That is the reason I'm giving it for 10 seconds. No matter what it will wait for 10 seconds if I declare the implicitly wait. And now what I'm doing I'm using a driver dot get method to do what to navigate through the facebook.com page. Okay, because this is how I need to navigate through using the driver dot get command and you know after this close driver I can simply give like driver dot quit if I want to quit the driver after it completes the execution else it will remain as it is and it will never quit from the drive. Okay, so this is all about how I have written my program for test ng and now let's see the test ng dot xml file. So this is the test ng dot xml file. I will tell you what are the important things that you need to focus on first the test name I can give it as whatever so that is first test and the suit name it will be test suit. Okay. And inside the classes I have given my class name as the package name that is this one that is code.edureka.pages dot test ng because my class name is test ng and I want to refer to this class and I want to perform all the at test before method and after method that is this annotation it has to perform it has to perform after method annotation and at test annotation as well. So if I want to do that I have to just refer to my class. So that is why I'm referring it in this way. Say if you again run and check the output, it'll be the same. It will enter the details. It will hit the login button and it will enter the value as Edureka. Simple. You can choose among these. And finally what it will do it will quit. Why because it's simple because I have mentioned driver dot quit. So this is how you can implement a simple page object model without the help of page factory. Now say if you want to use the help of page factory how to do I will tell you that as well. So you can see here inside the project there are two kind of packages one is the page package and the other one is the test package why as I have told you for your pages and your locators and your script you need to maintain a separate files that is a separate class files and that is the reason I'm creating two class files for that and in my test package I'll be writing my test cases and finally for my execution I'll be writing the test ng dot xml. So first what I will do I will explain you all the four programs and Tell you about the linking between these things. Okay. So, first one will be the test paste.java file. So, this is the test case class, and here I am writing the before suit annotation. I will tell you what is all about. So, first, what I did, I created a class and I have declared my web driver as null, and I have set my system properties for my Chrome driver. And I am again I am using the implicitly wait, and what I am doing using driver dot get I'm navigating through facebook.com. So initially when the Chrome driver launches Google Chrome it should simply navigate through facebook.com. Okay and after suit what it should do it should quit the driver. So here I'm just writing for at after suit and at before suit. I'm not giving it at suit or at test. So where is that that is here that is the FB login test. So in this program I'm writing the add test annotation and inside the init method I'm initializing the elements with the help of what page factory and for this what I'm doing I'm passing my driver that is the Chrome driver and I'm passing the FB login page dot class that is FB login page is this one and the class file of this and I'm using these variables to set the email and to set the password 
and also to click on the login button. Okay, not only that, I'm also doing one more thing over here that is, I'm creating an object of a home page and passing the parameters as my driver and the home page that is FP home page that is this file dot class. And from that, I'm performing two actions that is, I want to click on the profile drop down and I want to hit the logout link. So basically, I'm performing five actions here. One is passing the variable or the value for my email ID and password and hit on the login button using the first login page and using the home page. I'm clicking on the drop down and click on the logout button. Yes. So now let's see how the page factory took these elements that is the FB login page and the FB home page. First, let's see FB login page dot Java. So this is not the test case. This is the pages that I have declared. So I have declared a class of this and I've given the constructor that is this dot driver is equal to driver. And as I have told you, I have to use the find by annotation and using the X path. What I'm doing, I'm locating on the email and creating a web element called as text box again for password. This is the X path for that and web element as password text box and for submit button. That is a login. You can see that and the web element will be sign in button and next for all these three elements that is email text box password text box and sign in button. I am creating a method for that and just sending the keys as string email. So this string email will refer to the value that I have given in login test that is this one and again this password that is a set password. I am passing string password and password text box dot send keys will refer to the string password from the login test page. Why? Because I'm referring to the class file of the login page and that's the reason it will refer from there and it will hit on the login button and again that will also refer to this one. So basically what it is doing it is giving an action call to these elements to refer to these email text box password text box and sign in button. To perform an action on that. Yes, so that is how it works because I'm creating the pages as a different that is my class files, my locators, everything will be in different package and my tests will be in different package so that you can reuse the code. It helps you to maintain the code readability and also it enhances the performance of a test automation framework. So these three things refers to the Facebook login page wherein I have Initialize my locators and I'm declaring them. And now you can see here there's something called as home page as well. And there is two more options. I'm using the chat dot sleeve for four milliseconds because I want to wait until the next action is performed and see what's happening actually. And that's the reason I'm giving the chat dot sleep as 4000. That is a four milliseconds. So here I have the FB home page. In this, I'm using the find by annotation to find the locators by X path, and this is the X path. To click on the account settings, that is a drop down. And using the link text, what I'm doing, I'm again using the link text present on the logout. And the web element will be logout link for this logout locator. And the web element will be profile drop down for the account settings. And again, what I'm doing, as both are links, I'm just clicking on the profile drop down link and the logout link as well. And again, in the FB login test, these things are the call to action from this FB home page. So this is all about how you can actually write the test case classes in different file and the pages or your test scripts regarding your locators and everything in the different file. So now what I will do the name of my file will be page object model project and the class name will be the test base because inside my test base I have the before suit and after suit annotation where I have to execute and in FB login test. There is a attest annotation in which I have to perform all these actions. Okay, so now let's run and check the working of that and the output as well. So first, SNG detected the version, and Chrome driver launched Google Chrome, navigated through Facebook.com. It's entering the email address, password, hit on the login button, and now what it will do? It will click on the profile drop down and hit the logout button. So you can see that it took a time of four milliseconds and finally what it did it just quit the window because in the after suit I have declared that you have to quit the driver. So you can see inside the suit 
the total test that was run was one and there was no failures and there were no skips as well so you saw that it took a gap of four milliseconds between the actions to perform because i have declared it in order to exactly know what actually was happening with the test cases and how i also wanted to show you how the actual flow worked and that's the reason i gave a thread dot sleep as four milliseconds so this is how you need to create a separate packages for test case classes and the script classes and finally you have to write a test ng.xml file so basically this is all about the page object model design pattern where you will be having the pages that is fb login page and fb home page and you will be having the test where these two will be interlinked and the home page and fb login page will be having a test case one and in the test base this will refer to this why because it has to take the add test suit from the fb login test okay and this test base will refer to fb login test because test base contains only add before suit and add after suit and there is no add test and this will refer to this class so this is all about how you can define a page object model design pattern and if you wish to know more about it you can check out our edureka course on selenium certification training where these topics are carried out or taught in a broader gauge and you will get well versed with selenium and if you wish to know more about selenium and it's working you can also check out our youtube playlist and i hope you like this video and you found it interesting and if you have any queries or any doubts regarding to this video or if you need help with the code anything you can just comment in the comment section below and we will reply back to you at the earliest and resolve all your queries thank you for watching this video and have a nice day